Welcome to The Passion Pod with your host, Chris Johnson. Thanks for joining us. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the feature presentation. Season 7, Episode 1. Welcome back, friends. Today, we travel to Los Angeles, California to hang out with a Grammy Award-winning artist. He's been in the LA music scene for quite a while, playing all over the place, and worked with what seems to be everyone, including a bunch of my friends, and I didn't realize that before. (laughs) Um, Welcome to the show, Piano Viking Cowboy Jedi Dave (laughs) Yaden. I feel welcome. Thank you, Chris. Dude, thanks for having me over at your place. It's kind of sweet. And your son's the coolest kid ever. Yeah, His name's Wolfgang. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty bad. So who are you and what are you passionate about? Um, well, that I, what a question. Wow, who are you? Um, you know, I really love that question because uh, so many people see themselves as, as what they do. They immediately define themselves as what they do, right? And that's not who... That's, I, uh, I get into trouble if I define myself that way, right? What I have to define myself as in order to have peace and to be happy about waking up in the morning is I define myself as being here to uplift and edify my fellow human beings. That's where I start. That's where my passion is, right? So that's who I am. Who I am is someone who is here to in any way that I possibly can uplift to elevate and to edify my fellow human beings, which I think, I think that where I am right now in my life is that I believe that the more I can teach, the more I can learn about love and the more that I can teach one, uh, everyone to love one another. I think that that is the way for like elevation and healing for the world. And so, um, the way that I started to do acting art, music, any of that stuff is because I found that when I used those gifts, it tends to open the aperture of people's hearts and then I can better help them, educate them, elevate them, edify them. Those are the, those are the gifts and talents that are, that make it the easiest to do that. That was the, that was the, who are you? What was the second question? (laughs) What are you passionate about? (laughs) Um, That would be the most, that, that would be the thing that I'm the most passionate about is, is is helping people achieve really happiness, no matter what their circumstances are. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think the funny thing is, is I don't think when people look at what you do, they don't necessarily see like the reasoning why. And I think you do something long enough and you, you start to think about it more like, okay, what is it that I really enjoy about this? Right. So like, I always talk to people about skateboarding, right? Skateboarding, what I actually loved about it the most after like looking back on the times when I was younger was the lifestyle of going out and hanging out with my friends, going on adventures. Like that's what it was. Skateboarding Mm -hmm. was like the thing that we all did together while you were Right. Yeah. But it was just like going out with your friends and doing whatever. Right. And, yeah. and so when I opened my skateboard shop, the reasoning was because I thought back to the skateboard shop I used to hang out at when I was 14. And that was like the clubhouse. Right. It was like the cool place with yep. these older people that I thought were the coolest, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I had that like mentality because my, my older daughter was a year older at that point, that like parental instinct of like, I want to provide this like cool clubhouse place for kids and Mm -hmm. I want to be able to help mentor them and help them grow into like the best people that they can be. And that then inadvertently ended up kind of becoming why I do the show because I talk to people in my store, you know, one at a time and I, and my shop's been open seven and a half years. So I've had kids that were in middle school that are now in college doing their thing and I've kind of like watched them grow. Mm -hmm. And I really felt like through the show this was all of a sudden, now I'm not limited to skateboarding and now I'm not limited to talking to one person at a time or two kids at a time. Now this could open the audience to being thousands of people and I can help them achieve the things they want to achieve and pursue their passions in that same kind of a way. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I just think it's interesting because it's like, I don't think people realize that that necessarily is really what drives it. Yeah. Well, and that is the, the, one of the first things that I try to, so now I mentor a lot of artists as well. And 
it's very important to have a hold of why why you're doing it, right? So if like for example, if I know that what I want to do is entertain, elevate, edify, right? And I well, I do that through entertainment. I want to elevate and edify. I do that through entertainment. But if I you know, I played so many shows and you can begin to lose sight of why you're doing it or you can begin to become like um uh, sometimes I become a little listless about the shows or something seems to be wearing a little thin or whatever. And the minute that I remember why I'm doing it, that I bring myself back to that center, that's when I am able to innovate all new show stuff. That's when I start to write again. I do all of that because I remember that thing that I am crazy passionate about, uh, which is, helping people for the short amount of time that I'm here. Yeah. Well, and people think that a lot of times it's like uh, this same general, I, you know, idea comes to money. I talk to people about this a lot with money and I try to explain to them, you need to remember that money is just a tool, but that's not actually what you want. You don't want the money. You want whatever that money is going to get Correct. you. The, so instead of looking at gaining the money, let's look at what you actually want and say, okay, well, what ways are there to get to this goal? Does money have to be a huge, significant part of it? A lot of times, not necessarily. Yeah, you know, but but that's, you know, people don't like sit back and think. And that's one of those things where it's like, okay, a lot of us, maybe we should do a little bit of, you know, yoga and meditation or something and sit oh, outside and like try to reflect i used to well, ride a bicycle sorry i used right. to ride a bicycle to my shop every day for a little while and i found that just that like took roughly 12 minutes mm -hmm. that 12 minutes every morning with no music on with nothing just mm -hmm. like riding my bicycle gave me that reflection time every day that was like incredibly beneficial yeah. for me to really think about how you know being intentional with yeah. my time oh absolutely uh i, I was gonna say um uh, when it comes to money, that what's interesting is that when you, I, I find that it is when you become hyper focused on what it is that you want. Like you said, it's not necessarily, it's not actually money that you want. It money is going to help you buy maybe the thing that you want or help you get closer to the thing that you want. But if you really focus on that thing that you want, and again, why you want it, when those things become hyper focused, I have found that's when money starts to roll in because really a lot of times if it's an investor or just a bunch of people spending a small amount of money, people are looking, I had a friend say this once to me, uh, this is a really, really good friend of mine, a, a bass player. His name's Darwin Johnson and I've been playing with Darwin forever. He's actually going out on tour right now with Ben Harper. And, um, Darwin, um, is, he's been like a Buddha in my life. And so one of the things he said one time, it really stuck with me is he said, you know, people want to be going somewhere. And when you decide that you're going to do something, I'm going to open a skate shop. I'm going to start a band. I'm going to have an alcohol brand. I'm going to, whatever it is, when you decide to do that, you become a moving train. What's interesting is because people by their nature, they want to be headed in a direction they want to be going somewhere you find that all sorts of people hop on a lot of times without you ask even asking them to do it you find people help you you know hey I'm, I'm doing this i'm renovating the shop and before you know it you got like there's there's people showing up kids showing up after school working for hours because the, it's it's that people want to be doing something and moving somewhere and so the point is is when your vision becomes very clear about what you want to do a lot of times that's when that's when your conversation with an investor for example will be inspiring to that investor because your vision is so clear so that cuz they they're not going to be inspired to invest in you until your vision is clear so they can see it if you're just like oh, I don't want to do this thing you know I don't really want to you know just run my own shop and you know I just but I I just can't do it cuz I don't have the money like that while it may be true is profoundly not inspiring 
Yeah, but I mean, if you look at like, if we all help each other, right, where you were talking yeah. about initially, people don't want to help you make money. Nobody wants to help anyone make money. <laughs> That's not it, right? They want to help we're you. Usually not. No, you're they right. They want to help you create something. Yes. They want to help you achieve right. something because they want to be on your team and watch you right. succeed. And th- well, then they get to be a part of it. Right. That's what. That's what's awesome. But but that's that's what I, I guess maybe I went too long or a uh, long way around to saying. But I like what you said that like what you don't you don't actually want money some a lot of times is not actually the thing that you want you actually want this thing right here if it's like well I, I want to be able to help I want to give kids in my community a place to be and at the same time have a like develop a community around a place a community that meant a lot to me where it has a very like tight-knit community and it has specific music genres tied to it specific style tied tied to it all of this stuff um which reminds me of like I don't know if you saw that I I one of the uh I work with this big uh, host, but post hardcore band uh, called Pierce the Veil, which is very much attached to that community. Um, but um, it, like that is something that I don't know. I don't know anything about skating, and I and I want to be behind that. I'd be like, yeah, do you want me to? You know, it's, I'll send. I'm, it's, I'll send you something. I'll send you some music or whatever it is, because that then I get to be a part of something that is changing the world in a good way. And, and I, I, I think this is a great place to start, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, I, like, I guess I'm kind of like bouncing all over the place here when normally I kind of go right into like what I was, I don't know. I usually kind of go with a general trajectory of what I was going to talk about. And we're kind of like <laughs> bouncing around a little bit. But one thing also I wanted to touch on just because we're like right there is people, it's really hard for people to want to monetize and ask for money like mm. a lot of times artists yeah. and stuff or or even entrepreneurs it's it's hard to ask for money right but here's the thing instead of just asking for money if you really care about what you're trying to do and you just make it really public mm-hmm. what it is that your goals are right and say if anybody is interested in helping and not throw out like i need money but anyone's right. interested in helping this is exactly what i'm trying to do mm. i've found that it's been incredibly easy to find like-minded people that want to be a part of oh, things and help just because I'm willing to put myself out there and say, Hey, I'm trying to do this. Absolutely. Even with, even with like this, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I could reach out to a bunch of people and say, Hey, will you come on my show right. and maybe hear a bunch of no's. However, if I interview a handful of people, you know, like I did at the very beginning and mm-hmm. then I do right by them and reach out to all of them and say, Hey, I'm trying to do this. Do you know anybody else that might be interested in helping me do this? Mm. I'd, had so many people reach out and That's immediately awesome. be like, yeah, I mean, that sounds perfect. Why not? Right. You know, I mean, just like this conversation. So anyways, so how can people best follow you and how can they best reach out if they wanted to try to get a hold of you? I know you're on like a whole bunch of different things right now. We were just talking about TikTok off mic right. too. So yeah. like where can people best go find all your stuff and get in contact? The best place to find my stuff and get in contact with me is, well, to find whatever I'm doing like from week to week. That would be Instagram and TikTok. A little more Instagram than TikTok. Um, like TikTok is specifically like almost a daily video. Like I, I think I put three or four up bare minimum a week right here in my living room in general or at another place with a grand piano. Everything is live and genuine and no, not edited. Um, and then um, Instagram is a better place to actually contact me. But all of that content is up there, plus a little more. Like on TikTok, I'm not going to post anything about like Wolfgang and I uh, flying uh, to uh, Washington. But um, but that that'll be all over my Instagram. It's it's a little more like it's all pretty much out there for me, pretty much for now. Um, but Instagram is the best place. And then and then YouTube is like if I there there are things right now that I'm working on for that. But YouTube is like the things bigger budget like uh videos and 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 things that like uh, the where the production value is a lot sure and your handle is just dave yaden which is d-a-v-e-y-a-d-e-n correct yeah everywhere awesome yeah, yeah my name's chris johnson so i can't use that for anything <laughs> no you can't no, i got work. i got lucky with a rare last name that also rings well with my first name yeah, absolutely. So I, I I listened to some other interviews, but I, it didn't pop up. I, I'm sure you've told it a million times, but why Piano Man and uh, or Piano Viking, excuse me, and Cowboy Jedi? I mean, okay. looking at you, I can see the Viking part. <laughs> like that's pretty clear. Yeah, yeah. Um. So okay. So so to if you were to go 
one like thumb flick uh, down or up, depending on how you look at it on IG, the um, the cowboy Jedi, Jedi thing comes from mostly my style um, because it's that's pretty much what it is. And then I, I uh, less way more Jedi and much uh, excuse me, way more Jedi yeah, and, and much less cowboy. But I'm from Houston, Texas. And, um, I am, a, I guess a little like country in some ways, uh, like lifestyle wise, I think. And people, I never think of it that way, but then you guess that's how people think of it though. Like I have, we're here in the city, but I have chickens in the backyard and, um, <laughs> and my, cowboy boots. on. That's right. Uh, sometimes I'm not wearing them right now, but, um, um, in general, I don't wear cowboy boots super often. Uh, but uh, I, I, I I used to, uh, not not for the last like eight years. Um, but um, and then my hobby is uh, building things out of repurposed wood, and um, it tends to be like furniture, and I make stuff. So <laughs> it's kind of a country cowboy sort of thing, and and you know like I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I fix my own car and do stuff like that. This is all like, it's just kind of natural stuff, but it, 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 uh, so yeah. And also, you know, the, with this beard and everything, you know, if, if I put on, if I go, if I put on like some kind of like rock and roll kind of outfit, I immediately look like a rock and roll cowboy. But so the cowboy and the Jedi, those two things are kind of from, um, a little bit mentality and a lot of the style. And then the piano Viking thing is something that uh, I'm a very, uh, as you may have seen from the videos, a very animated player. Um, and um, uh, a lot of people say it's a little hard to describe the uh, genre of music that I play um, because it is it's got a lot of jazz and classical elements, but it's also very like bouncy and soulful and, uh, violent. And, um, I look that way. The sides of my head are shaved and I, 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 I you know, if you, <laughs> I mean, there's so many people making, as soon as I started to grow my beard out, like I, I, I didn't realize that I have the same haircut from all the Viking TV shows. Um, I didn't literally realize that. I just knew that I wanted this, all the hair on the side of my head gone. Um, I, I, I wanted that for, it's been that way for years, 12 years, at least it's been that way. I'm, I'm like, okay, this is, I don't want, as soon as I did that, like my hair looked the way that it wanted to. So I, I don't know that's so, and I'm very like a very animated, violent player. So that's, that's how it worked out, I guess. I mean, it's not a bad thing. It's important <laughs> to be recognizable, right? I mean, even yeah. like. I always wanted to have a gold tooth since I was like 18. I like, always I wanted one. one. <laughs> and my ex-wife always was like, no, that would look stupid. <laughs> and finally, like a year and a half ago, I was like, I, I just want one. Yeah. And ever since I got one, I have like people comment on it mm -hmm. all the time. It's like a thing. Even right. like the new rebrand re for my show, the graphic right. designer I hired made yeah. like the skull have a little gold tooth on it and I everything. Love it. Yeah, but it's just like a... Yeah, it's like a thing. And I don't think like if you have anything that stands out about you and when you have a name like Chris Johnson, it doesn't stand out. right? You got to like have something. So the fact that I look like fairly unique, especially in my little town in Wisconsin, right. like that's a good thing. Sure. You know what I mean? It yeah. makes it a lot more a, little, a lot more marketable. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. Well, I think also it depends, you know, if you're doing something that you really want, like you said, like you'd wanted it for a long time. So when you did it, the reason that it worked is that y is that you really wanted it. So there's something about it that works, right? And so that thus the like cowboy Jedi, you yeah. know, Viking thing. It's 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 just something that the, people have been making all three of those word references: Viking, cowboy, Jedi. My whole life, without me, I did I didn't <laughs> I didn't bring any of them up. They've just been making them, and f and finally, I've just relaxed into it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just just gotta own it. So, <laughs> so we were connected by my mut our mutual friend uh, David Canava, which yeah. is Mad Hat Drums. I interviewed him, 
I remember listening Love to an interview. Dave. You worked on well that whole like set that he did, right? That whole show, the Man in the Hat drum show. Yeah, you helped yeah, we write did. It. Uh, yeah, yeah. I wrote uh, um, a massive amount of that music. Yeah. Okay, so what in general is your connection? Like you did that, but you must have met him before, just because they were both on the show. He lived I'd love here. to hear your your story of he, how you know David and then Stefano not, as I'm well. I'm sorry, not not he lived here. His his girlfriend uh, lived here in this house. Yes, in this house. Yeah, she was your roommate. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> cool. So, and she came home one day, and she told i was married at the time so my wife and i were here and she came home and told my wife and i that like that um we had to meet her new boyfriend because he was a really good drummer and uh i was positive that my roommate was n- not a good judge of whether someone was a good drummer or not but um you know and then you know a couple weeks later she he came uh walking in and He's the nicest guy. Yeah. He's he's on a short list of nicest people that I know in my life and that I've ever met. He has like one of the most approachable smiles. Yeah. He's <laughs> he's kind and nice and silly and doesn't take himself seriously. He's I love him. I love him. He do you know how close he lives to here, by the way? No, I didn't go to his house, I went to his studio. Just throw a rock three times and hit his house. Oh god. He lives right there. The awesome. two minute drive, may, maybe two minutes this way. Awesome. <laughs> I didn't think of that. Uh, um, so uh, yeah, so so he came over and then and um, and showed me his YouTube site and you know because he was at the time had a quite a like a, a viral YouTube drumming site and showed me all that and he was so nice and he was good he was great and and we had a lot of mutual interests and um he had just moved out here and so he was really looking for a connection and um i'm have lived out here for years and this is where i'm established it the most this city i'm established the most in this city uh, so and so i was only too happy to help him out to introduce him to whoever and then as we as i was doing that i knew, as we got to know one another we became we liked doing production together so when he started this thing it was very natural for him to go, Hey man, I'm, I'm, I'm writing this music. Can you help me? And so goodness, we wrote a lot of music together for that. Tons. Yeah. I mean, I, I got to listen to a good amount of it and I was always kind of curious of that. Cause I'm like, there's, this clearly isn't just all drums. There's a whole bunch of piano in this. So like I, you I played being a, a drummer, I'm like, yeah. there's no, obviously David didn't write and perform all the piano. So no, like no, I was a little confused as it. to like how that came about no all the all the with very few exceptions i played all of the musical instruments everything wow. and i and i wrote all the parts yeah. wow oh he dude he would tell you that yeah yeah no no i'm sure but that yeah okay so what about stefano how did you meet him was that through the american idol thing no stefano was because um i had a night so i told you that i've had like for the last like five and a half years i've had a weekly sold out show yeah. And so those one of those shows was called Super Tuesdays Live and we featured mostly so it was what the show was is myself and a and a um a host his name was Mike Rossi and we had we played about a, a third to a half of the show was my instrumental music that I was still freshly writing. Um, he would sing some covers and then we had guest singers and most of the guest singers were either from American Idol or from the voice. And so he was, he knew my, my partner, my host, co-host, Mike Grossi, he brought in Stefano. I'd never met him. And you were just immediately blown away by his voice. Cause that dude's incredible. <laughs> yeah, he's like he's not that dude. big he's of also, a guy, but he has so much power. Yeah, Stefano's kind of mini. Um, but uh, I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He came, it was funny because he came in and he was all like, he's kind of he's he's the kind of quiet that if you don't know him, you think maybe he's being stuck up or pretentious, and um, and it and, and it's hilarious because he's the opposite. He's such a nice guy, so kind and like, I really like Stefano. He's a really nice. I, I like Stefano a lot. Um, 
And, uh, but I remember I'm like, who is this guy? Cause it was like, also, you know, he was like, came in like hood and like glasses. He was like just on his phone. And I'm like, is this guy going to like, well, but you know, but he knew Mike, he felt more, he felt comfortable in there, but yeah, he came in and he started singing and, um, he does have rare talent. He has rare talent. So yeah, I've had him, uh, no, I haven't had him demo anything that I wrote. He he and I wrote a couple things together, um, and we and we demoed one of them out with David Canova, actually. Wow. Yeah. I got. I'm gonna have to like listen to all of these things. Yeah. So I know you started playing piano really really young. Obviously, you must play some other things too. What I guess what was the trajectory from when you started playing until you had like what your first paid gig was? Because I remember listening in on something and you said that you were making money off music before you really like needed to. So clearly that was like at a relatively young age. What was that time frame? Was that all back in Houston? Like and you didn't come out to L.A. until college oh, yeah. when you went to USC? Right. Yeah, I came out here when I was 20. Oh, OK. So so, yeah, I was in I was in Houston until I was 20. Okay, so what was the first paid gig that you had? Oh, dude. I might have been 12. I was playing in a restaurant. And they hired you at 12 just to play piano? Were you singing yeah. or anything or just piano? No, no, no. I probably did a little bit of singing, but I was mostly just improvising, yeah. Where did you, how did you learn piano? Did you just take just traditional no, lessons? No, I, did, I didn't just... take lessons. Any. Wow. Well, no, but they did give me like one or two and I, and I begged my parents to please not send me back to that woman again. So. Okay. Did you learn how to play? Like, did you learn how to read music and then would play from no, there no, or are you no, just no. like by sound? No, no, no. It's music is completely a language, right? It's completely a language. So you think about for your kids, for example, you know, while you do, you might've read to your kids, but the fact is what you do is you talk to them and then all of a sudden they start talking back to you right. and really you don't teach them to read until they, they've been, they've been talking for three or four years. And then you talk, teach, then you begin to teach them to read. And you think about really probably your eight year old is the, is the one is probably just beginning to be good at reading. Right. right? Yeah. So, um, so, but she's been talking for what, five years now. So, so really that's music is completely a language and it should be that way. It's a, it, it breaks my heart that both music and, and language, um, are, are taught very badly they, they're taught because they're taught from a standpoint of reading and, and it's counterintuitive because that's not how we learn. Like we, in other words, you go take Spanish, French, Japanese, whatever it is, and you take classes and the first class begins with you studying the written language and, and the grammar of that language. And that's, and when you were a baby, which, which is when you were the dumbest you've ever been in your life, <laughs> you know, yeah. you, that's not how you learned. How you learned is they just started talking to you. And you learn with pictures and sounds. And so um, in the same way, and that's why no one ever, you know, that's why you took four years of what in high school? What'd you take? Japanese. Yeah. Do you remember anything other than like, <laughs> how are you? And goodbye. And, you know, you, you remember probably like five, five, yeah, not very, things. not anything useful. Yeah. After <laughs> four f years. Yeah. Four years. Think about that. So what that is, is a failure on, a failure on the side of that program. Four years, man. Yeah. Dude, your kids were talking that four years from four, that's from infant, from a potato that doesn't know what it is, right? To a four-year-old that doesn't understand what four means. And that four-year-old can talk. Four years, you were an adult in high school, can't speak Japanese. That's a <laughs> failure. That's because it's not taught right. So music is, music is the same thing. Music is a language. It should be taught. When I teach, what I do is I, I ask the person what their favorite song is. We turn it on and I'd say, play with it. And you would be amazed how good people are out the gate at doing it. Because sure. your ear is, everyone has an ear. Everyone has an ear and everyone's ear is very, very well tuned as a matter of fact. Like if you have a singer, for example, get up and sing bad notes in a church or something like that, everyone, is, oh, oh, right? Is, yeah. Right? How? How is that possible? Well, it's because you can speak it. Sure. You can speak it pretty well, actually. You just don't, you don't understand how that applies to up, like playing an instrument or singing or anything like that. So everyone can speak it to a pretty high degree. So, yeah, so you know, I didn't need lessons. Sure. So yeah. what, what made you want to go to college then in the first place? Um, 
Well, I, I did. I, I don't know what makes anyone want to go to college. Well, mine nobody, was my parents, right? So yeah, that was no, the general. That's what I was say. Nobody wants yeah. to go to college. Your parents tell you you should go to college and everyone around you tells you you should go to college. So you go to college. So that's it. So I, by the time I went to college, I don't know how I'm lucky that I had it figured out already that college wasn't going to help me do what I wanted to do, you know, cause I wanted to be in the major label industry. I wanted to sign a record deal and be on the radio and stuff. So, um, I, but, but, uh, my dad at the time taught at USC, which meant that if I got in, I would, it would, the tuition would be free. So that was like my free ticket to Los Angeles. So that's why I went to college here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so like what I was telling you off mic is I went to school for business and really what I, and I'm sure like later years, I would have learned some things for sure that were, for, that were helpful. But primarily the one thing that I actually gained anything from, from was interpersonal communications. But really what I learned through sales, cause I've been doing sales since I was 16 and that's primarily what I want to do with business. Cause I didn't want to work for a big corporation. That was never hmm. my vision ever. Hmm. I, from when I was young, I either wanted to own my own store or run my own store, but awesome. I, that was the role that I saw myself in. Cool. And either I can work with people and sell things or I really can't. And it mostly comes down to the personal communication aspect from it. That's mm. where most of it comes from. And I was good at sales. So I quickly realized, well, I could keep going to college or I could just be this best salesperson at this store and then I could get a raise and then I could get promoted and then I could move to whatever other store and I could climb that ladder. And I don't really see why I need a paper degree to show me whether or not I can run this store and be effective when there I can have go. the numbers directly mm. behind me. Right. Mm -hmm. So like, that's kind of what I did. Sure. That, that was my, my path. So yeah. at what point then did you realize while you were going to school? Well, I should ask this. You, I had that one class anyways, that I thought was really helpful. What did you learn from USC, like going to college that you think ended up translating and being beneficial towards you in like in your career? Nothing, nothing at all. No, not one thing. Okay. So what did you learn? So we talked a little bit off mic about it too, with business being like, you have to be business minded for this stuff to work, right? right. Because everyone is talented. There's a lot of people, there, there's too many people out there and so much access to a lot say, of things. By the way, I would actually say that it hurt me. Going to college? Yeah, yeah. Because it taught you the it wrong- It gave me a wrong idea of, of how you're supposed to make, how you're supposed to make money or, or have any kind of success in the business. How do you think's the best way for people to learn those things then for how to be successful in the business side of something like music doing it. Cause see, do, if you, if you're not good by the time that you're 19, 20, if you're not good at music by that time, you just start doing something else. You don't need, you don't even need to go to college. Sure. I think what's important and maybe you'll agree or maybe you won't is surrounding, surrounding yourself with people who are doing the things that you want to be doing because they're, yeah. they have the knowledge that yeah. you actually want to be gaining. Totally. If you're hanging around other people that haven't achieved it yet either, they might have some things that they're better at than you and they might have yeah. some perspective, but really if you're willing to be modest, humble, say, Hey, I'm looking for help. This is what I'm trying to do and align yourself with people that are already doing it. I think they're usually like the best teachers for that type of thing. Dude, if you want to, if you want to write songs, right? Mm -hmm. And you, even if you take a songwriting class, you, you know what the f you're going to do in your songwriting class? The you're same gonna, thing as You're going to get assignments to write songs. That's what you're going to do, right? Right. How much do you want to pay someone to, to like, <laughs> to do that and, and to set the, like, a professor like that's what you that's who you want to like judge your tunes really at the end of the day you should have someone judging your tunes that is a good songwriter so and you know and if that's really not possible then really at the end of the day still what you need to do is just write songs that's what you need to do you you want to write songs you want to have a band start a band you don't need to go to college for that like what are the, what are they gonna what? yeah well i mean i think it's the whole like idea of doing it rather than like reading it right the same type of thing yeah. we were talking about before if yeah. you put yourself out there to do it you're going to learn all those things a lot faster because you're in the real world and you're right. going to take some falls but that's okay you're going to learn those lessons a lot more directly right, right. whether yeah. it's stage presence or anything else yeah i could you know i can i can read french but i can speak spanish what country do you think I'm going to get do, do better? <laughs> at? You know, like I right, know yeah, how yeah. To, to pronounce the words as they're put together, you know, in, in the letters, excuse me, as they're put together in French. Right. 
I know, so I know that. I know what they mean. But I can speak Spanish, right? But I'm not sure I could, like, spell zapatos, but, you know, I know what they are. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, again, so I'd, I'd rather go to a Spanish-speaking country so I can do anything at all. Sure. <laughs> you know? Sure. <laughs> so, for somebody that's, like, currently still working like a full-time job, right? Yeah. And they're really talented at say whatever kind of whatever music they're doing. They're really uh -huh. talented, right. but they're still working because they haven't figured out the business side. Eh, there's no you know what? I mean, I got okay, hold that I just want to make a comment about that. Yeah. There is no but. I think that what's part of what's tough about <clears throat> excuse me. Part of what's tough about um the way that we tend to here in America approach our lives is that we have this odd idea that you have to choose one thing, right? As opposed to, well, this is a thing that I do for money or I can do, or like even then, like we have an idea that you can only do one thing for money. It's, it's, that's insane. Um, I, my life got so much better and I made so much more money after I stopped telling myself that I could only do one thing to make money. But the reason that I had that idea is because I had shame about it. I had shame that I wasn't making, oh, enough here that I don't have to work doing these other things or whatever. As soon as I d applied all of my passions and skills to my life and allowed myself to do whatever, it, it was beautiful. And then all of your skills and in, in the other things that you're passionate about, what's interesting, and I'm sure you found this yourself, is they inform in ways that you did not expect on the other things that you're doing. Like, for example, I, I can only imagine the amount of like that your ability to communicate, to entertain someone and to find out about someone has massively grown via doing this. Right. And I can imagine there are times when you are surprised by using something that you learned here in your shop, right? That informs on it in that way. Or if you were all of a sudden doing some traveling and you've done so much traveling for this that now traveling doesn't bother you, but you're now traveling for something having to do with the shop or the kids or whatever. It's it, so that's my aside on that. Um, so you said for somebody that is not doing musically music professionally they're doing something else professionally now what's the end of that question that but they want to transition into doing that but they're struggling to find ways to be able to make money make money doing it because again i mean it's, it depends very specifically on what they want to do like sure. for example if, if it were someone in minneapolis right that um you know uh let's say owned a skate shop but wanted wants but loves playing blues guitar right well you know, th then it's, it's all so practical, man. I mean, you, 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 how many blues songs do you know? Oh, well, I know, I know 20. Well, okay. Well, that's enough to play a set. You go start at a coffee shop. <laughs> you know, you go play at a coffee shop. Cause the thing is, is if you're good, people are going to let you know, they're going to yeah. let you know right, right away. And then you're going to find out whether you have the option to move on. Right. Then you have an option to move on and, and do it somewhere else, do it somewhere bigger. And then before you know it, every time a music festival comes through town, you're on the small stage or you're getting opening acts and, and you know, or, or you, you know, it's really great. And sometimes someone hears you and they're like, did I have a, I have a recording studio? You want to come record something? And then, you know, you meet, you know, Chris Johnson and he's like, this song is great. I want to use it for the theme of my, but that's how you start. Right. You know, you start by, well, I mean, I don't know if let's hear your songs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I don't play or I did this or I haven't written anything or I don't write. I like to do covers though. How many covers do you know? I, I know all the covers. I don't play solo. I need to play with the band. Oh, you need to play with the band. All right. Well, do you know a bass player? Uh, yeah. Okay. Have you called him? Have you jammed together? Yes. You, you know, that's <laughs> at the end of the day, as I'm sure and you and I talked about this with, uh, when you founded your shop, there was so much like practical sh that you did that you were able to turn around and apply to when you started the podcast. And I'm sure when you started other things, it was, a, it was like, it is a very, very, very simple step by step process. And actually what's interesting. And I found this with life is that for the most part, the steps are pretty simple. It's just there. 
there's a lot of times there's so many of them we can be overwhelmed by the number of it or or you know or or maybe dismayed or surprised by going well i thought that i was going to do this step and then i was going to get to this next one and 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 it looks like i just found out that there's 20 steps between this one and the next one and i thought there were none between those two um but but again i mean if if you just approach something like systematically even 20 steps as opposed to one's not going to take as much time as you think it is you know i think one thing too and this is like i think you'll agree with me here is yes you want to start putting yourself out in that one particular thing but like you're talking about with traveling and different things right mm-hmm. there's a lot of ways that you can be gaining skill sets and be taking steps towards your goal that may not be exactly what you're thinking about necessarily and mm. you don't have to go with a certain path right so you don't have to be working at this coffee shop or whatever while you're doing this. What you can do though, is look at, okay, what skills do I currently have? What skills do I want to attain? What things do I have to do to get to this spot? Does it, do I have to do music necessarily to do that, to get better at this? Or are there some other things that I can do? Right? So like one random example would be like for like a podcast, right? Mm -hmm. I could be, I could work any random customer service job and make a point to be trying to connect to people and telling them about my show every single day and promoting myself from whatever that position is, right? Or I could get a job working for an advertising company so that way I could understand how the advertising part of that business works. Or Mm. I could get a job with a print company printing the t-shirts so that way I could understand how all of those types of things work. So that way I'm building that general knowledge behind the things that I wanna do to make me potentially more successful and have more tools going towards that. And I always try to tell people, you know, especially kids when they're driving for Jimmy John's or whatever, while they're going to college, I try to explain to them, you know, the, the dollar amount of whatever job it is that you're taking right now really shouldn't be the main reason why you're doing it. Is this working towards your goal? Yeah. It means to an end. Right. Is, and the dollar can get there, but realistically is what you're putting your time doing right now, helping you to achieve yeah. the things that you want to yeah. do Means and a lot of times the money doesn't have to be the main part yeah. of it there can be all kinds of different things that you can start doing so that's what yeah. i would encourage people is you don't have to have one full-time job that just makes you some money you can have a bunch of different yeah. side hustle things bunch of different things you're doing as long as they're all yeah. still taking steps in the direction towards the goal that you want to be you'll be surprised yeah. by how fast you get there i i would agree i would also say that you know a lot of times the reason that someone is very upset about the job that they have is that they're not doing the other things with the rest of their time. So the only thing that they make themselves do is the thing that they care about the least because they're like, well, I got to pay rent. Yeah. I mean, that's the cycle. So, so, so the thing that they make themselves do, they make themselves go to work when it's time to go to work. That's the thing that they'll be disciplined about, but they won't be disciplined about anything else that they know damn well that they feel very passionate about. And you talk about a way to f- yourself. Well, it takes all your energy out of you. You know, they put all that energy into that 40 hours. And a lot of times, especially if there's any physical labor attached to it, where they don't have the energy when it comes to the weekend to put it, into that. Yeah. A lot of times though, that job wouldn't be so, so soul sucking if, 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 if you didn't view it, if they didn't, yeah. like, like we were saying, a means to an end, mm-hmm. right? If, if the job is a means to an end, then, um, then you always have the end goal in sight. You're happy, man. I, <laughs> I think about some of the, uh, when I was like first starting out bands and stuff like this, uh, uh, years ago in LA, a way that I, um, often paid bills was doing, uh, church gigs and, um, cause church gigs, uh, they pay really well and, yeah, I, I really like them. They pay really well. And in general, everybody's nice. Sure. And um, there's a lot of stuff you don't have to deal with. I mean, the churches are still full of people, but like, and and anywhere, people are the problem. <laughs> but, but you know, in general, they're, you know, they sure, especially out here, they pay triple what like gigs play at clubs out here in Los Angeles. And it's easy money and blah, blah. So anyway, point is, is that I would, I caught myself being absolutely miserable on the way to these church gigs or on stage with them most of the time when I wasn't 
and, oh, excuse me, every time I realized it was because I was not doing the things that I really cared about in terms of my own career as a musician. So what was happening was it was the only musical thing that I was doing. So what I found myself thinking is, I fucking hate, I hate this. I hate this. This is not music. This, this is like, you know, just like hating the, you know, the drummer or how they played or whatever. It's just, just ignorant. And, 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 all the while it was really because it's especially important for me personally to have my own project. As soon as I, if, if I have my own project and I'm pouring in enough energy into it, those church gigs were so fun, so easy. I was so happy, so happy. I was like, oh, isn't this awesome? I get to walk in here and there's music set up for me in front of the page and surrounded by nice people. And most of the time, some lavish breakfast, you know, and, and, and all this stuff and everyone's nice. And I just go in and I get to play this, this easy music with nice people. And then they pay me all this money and I get to go home and, and do whatever I want for the rest of the day. And it's, and it's, and it's pushing me fast towards my goal with something that I actually love to do. I got to play music instead of do, I would, I would, I would have much rather for this $500 play some watered down Christian pop than for $500, um, balance somebody's fucking budget or something that I'm terrible at. Right. I would much rather have done that, but I did not have that perspective and I wasn't happy about doing it until I, um, unless I made sure that I was pouring my time into something else that I wasn't getting paid that five hundred dollars for. Yeah, but I mean, you don't necessarily have to, right? Because again, it's not about the money; it's about the no. That the was goals exactly that you that's had, exactly my you point. Know? Yeah, no, of course, yeah. totally. And that's what you were saying before too: is like you want to be moving towards something. So, like with my show, I I started doing my show shortly after my shop turned five, mm. right? Because at five, the five year mark with what my store is, I kind of felt like I did what I set out to do to a certain degree, mm. and I felt that that wave had just kind of like smoothed out, and now I'm hanging out doing my thing and I do enjoy it but I want to see the progress within myself I want to have a challenge I mm. want to have an, a goal and the goal wasn't a bigger store or multiple stores that's not the point the point was to be this like cool clubhouse hangout place for my community <sighs> that I'm from and I love right. it would get away from that if I wanted to expand on that so I had to find something else and I really found myself for that six months after my store turned five until I found like the show doing mm. that really kind of lost for what to do. And I saw the enjoyment from what yeah, I was yeah. doing with my career, like disappearing. Isn't that interesting? Right, which is frustrating because it's like, this is something I yeah. really, really love doing, right. but it's because I didn't yeah. have something I was like juiced about working towards. Right, and I experienced it too. It's funny that you don't you don't think of it right away. You know, it is confusing for a second. You're like, what's going on? And you, you know, you find yourself doubting. You're like, did I do the wrong thing? I, what, should I not open this up? What's going on? It is funny to, to like go through that process, but then it is of course such a huge relief to be like, oh, it's because I'm, th there's, th I have achieved this thing and it's because there's, there's other stuff here that I really care. Th that, you know, in, in terms of like, especially toward the podcast and, and pursuing passion is a, like that would, uh, for me, I think should be a, a guiding point, which is pay attention to your, like your inner, inner monologue about that stuff. It's, it's really, really important. And if you are at a place where you're not sure, then, then you have to sit down with a piece of paper and start writing. You have to start writing. You have to ask, you have to interview yourself. Go, what am I, why am I upset at my job? What do, you know, what do I not like about it? What, do, well, why do I not like this? Why do I blah, blah, blah? Because if you ask, you keep asking yourself questions, you're going to find it. You know, am I, is there something that I'm passionate about that I don't do? Is yeah. there something that I love that I don't do? Is there something that I like, that I care a lot about that I'm completely neglecting? You know, um, that's a, those are really important questions. Yeah, I think self-awareness and intention are things that we kind of lose sight of just because we have so much going on all the time. We're and not we're not good at it in this country, dude. Right? This no, is, we, we don't. We don't. We don't. Our our, our like philosophy is we don't have one. It, it, we're so far from a like like a like a cultural center around which we like find inner peace and or 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 like try to navigate life. It's it it, it used to be. 
a little bit, you know, it, well, it's been forever. It's, it's been, religion has always played a little bit of a part, but then again, religion is full of people. And so religion always gets, but like, we don't have a, a center. And, and so, and, and that's one of the things that we really suffer from is we don't, we don't, I didn't grow up with the idea of standing outside of myself and checking in on myself and going, how do I actually feel about this? I didn't grow up with that. Yeah, no, well, no and one we taught me to do yeah, that. Yeah, we don't teach that. What unfortunately we distract ourselves with things, you know, and that's we where we grow up with distractions. That's yeah, for goddamn so sure. So people, you know, they're tired from work, whatever they go, and then they sit and they watch TV, and their brain just kind of gets distracted yeah. rather mm-hmm. than thinking about it. I want to suggest a book. I brought it up on the show a while ago now, but somebody asked me the other day, like for a book suggestion. So there's a book that I read called Wake Up by Chris Perez Brown, hmm. and it was like a, a self awareness intention kind of book. So mm-hmm. it, it was all these three page practices, and there was like 50 practices that it basically said, okay, so for this time frame do this for you know five days or whatever and mm-hmm. then reflect on and see that how that helped one thing that it had on there was no screen time that wasn't directly related to your profession for one week mm. none at all you can't watch any youtube videos <laughs> can't do you can't play that's a video a, game or watch amazing. the news nothing <laughs> right i did that and then i refused to watch tv at all for yeah. six weeks yeah And I found that I have so many other things I would rather be doing. And that was just one of those practices. And since then, I really think just that book has helped me significantly Mm. with my self-awareness and reflection because of all the practices that were in there, such as sitting outside for five minutes to start your day with Mm. no distractions just to think. You know, there's a lot of things there. I want to talk about that sweet jam dude you're just giving me all the best jams and telling me all the best stories and now i get to look at this platinum record okay so anyways um i heard you say on a different uh a different podcast and this was something me and you are kind of talking about right now is with stuff like social media we are our own like brand and really like our own empire that we build which sounds like kind of ridiculous when i'm like i have this empire i'm building but it, it's a tiny, small scale. But I'm in complete control of everything that I do. Everything. And I have all the freedom to do anything that I want, which was what I was kind of telling you about before, where we're talking about, mon- you know, off mic, we're talking about monetization of social yeah. media and things like that. And yeah. I'm like, sure, I do get paid to make posts to my Instagram feed. Sure. That's great. I do get paid to run radio advertisements or whatever. Mm -hmm. However, I don't have to make that much money off of that individual thing because with my show I'm growing, now I have my clothing brand that does better because of it, which inadvertently my store itself gets a little bit more visibility because of it. Everything's just attached to like what I do. Passion as a brand is like my own little miniature empire that makes me enough money to do the things that I want to do. That's what's so cool now where you don't have these different bosses. So for yourself, you just told me that you, I mean, you've been, you've worked with a ton of different people and you've had a ton of success. Now you're like putting this time and energy into the TikTok thing. Right. You just told me you're working on a new uh, album. Yeah. And we're sitting with the, are we allowed to talk about the bottles on your table here? Because we're sitting with the first hundred bottles of your own gin that's coming out. So what's, what is your empire you're working on? What are the things that are currently coming out? Do you want to try it? Uh, I don't usually drink gin straight. I drink gin and tonics. Oh, well, there's a, there's a first time for everything. (laughs) Perfect. He's tasting it. Yes. Mm. Mm. (laughs) Exactly. That's smooth. It is actually. <laughs> yeah, usually if I if I drink anything straight, I'm like coughing. The, a the bit. word about this is that uh, uh, is that love is the answer. Is well, that's what you know. That, that anyway, that's the that's the name of the uh, gym. love is the answer. Yeah, it's actually from the uh, uh, from this uh, tattoo here, and uh, that tattoo is done by I don't know how far she got on this. This is a funny story. I have this. Uh, I, um, it's this uh, she ruthless. I think she was on Inked. Yeah, I remember seeing her on that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah there yeah. you go. Yeah, so so it was really funny. <laughs> it's hilarious. She's so nice. She's so nice and she's so cool. I um, I went, I, <laughs> the way I met, so she's now a very good friend of mine. I actually think she lives up by you now. Really? Yeah, yeah, she doesn't live in Los Angeles anymore. She moved up to, no, I gotta text her and find out. Um, I would love to interview her. 
Oh, you should. Yeah, absolutely. She's so cool. Yeah, remind, I know. I remember. Remind. I remember because I've watched all those cheesy tattoo shows. Like I don't for whatever Dude, reason I so like dope. watching. And but I remember seeing her on it because at the time she was like in the show or whatever they portrayed her as being like not an apprentice but like pretty like low key. You know what I mean in the really? show? I I think so. Oh, if I'm thinking so of the same talented. person. Um, and yeah, the, obviously it was like a whole drama thing around it. But I remember, and I was like, "Damn, that chick is cool as fuck." Yeah, yeah, she's dope. Um, so it, it's really funny how I met her because um, <clears throat> uh, so you see, all my tattoos are script. Yeah, except for I can't remember which side is it on. I can't remember. Anyway, um, they're all script. So I'm always, which is not super hard, right? Um, so really, at the end of the day, most of the time, I'm a waste of a good tattoo artist. Sure. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I'm on Melrose at this like hipster diner, and the the uh, manager has got like some cool script tattoos. And I was like, oh, who did that? <laughs> and he's like, oh, this this girl named Ruth, she's she's down the way, um, you know, at this tattoo shop. I'm like, oh, cool, which one? Because I was, I was ready. I knew what I wanted because I wanted this one for my son, Long Live the Wolf, right? So, um, so I'm like, okay, great. So he sends me down here and she comes like skateboarding out from the back of the shop. It was like, you know, in a movie, but anyway, she's, really, she's really cool. And you know, tattooed from head to toe, right? Really cool. We start talking. Well, my now ex-wife, but my wife at the time is Filipino and Ruth is Filipino. And I, so my son is half Filipino and Ruth has a son who is my son's age who is half Filipino. So, and also, I don't know if you didn't know this about <clears throat> Filipinos, but they are like family, family. And if you are even like peripherally involved with a, uh, it, to, to any Filipino, to other Filipinos, you are now family because you, you are involved it. You're, you know, you're in the family. It's, it's a beautiful thing about that culture. So my ex-wife is half Filipino and my kids are quarter Filipino oh, and the can, same age no, as your kids. <laughs> that's amazing so. <laughs> uh okay so so yeah so anyway so she so we find this out and like she is like just like elated we talk tattoos she draws this tattoo up we go back to her booth and she's like oh i gotta run and get you know some stuff so i can give you this tattoo and again i'm just like i'm just like having it i mean oh there's a piano in the there was a uh, uh, eighty eight key keyboard, so like she was and she was like, oh yeah, that's my keyboard. I I brought it here because I play piano, and so I was like, oh I play piano. She's like, bet it's not as good as me, you know, like we're just joking, whatever. So I go over and play piano, and she's like, what the fuck? <laughs> so so we're just like b new f new best friends, right? And then she takes me back to her booth. <laughs> And, and she's like, oh, I got to pick up some stuff before we get, the, you know, I, she had to get her gun or whatever. And I like look around the booth and it's like her, like on the inside cover of Rolling Stone, you know, like all from the show, like when right. the show was big and they were featuring her on like in all these magazines. And I was like, oh, I can't afford this tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Like I don't have like famous tattoo artist TV money for a tattoo, and on top of that, I wouldn't pay it. Like you know, like that's like I'm not gonna spend two thousand dollars on a five hundred dollar tattoo. Right, I'm not going to. Right, I, it's also because I don't watch these shows. I don't even know them, so it's not that's not even worth it to me. I'm you know right. So anyway, but she comes back, and I'm like, and we've just like bonded you know over like kids and family and stuff and I'm, I'm like I'm like Ruth um I didn't know that you were a famous tattoo artist it's not your fault for not telling me obviously because well what how do you do that but um I can't afford this tattoo <laughs> and she's like what do you mean I was like I can't afford this tattoo you're on inked dude I can't do this so the long and the short of it is she was so cool and um she was like well how much were you like prepared to pay. And I was prepared to pay like a competent tattoo price for my tattoo. Right. I wasn't, I wasn't coming in on the cheap in any way, especially because it's a tat. You understand it's, yeah, a, yeah. it's a tattoo. So I'm, I'm coming in on the high. Right. Um, but, and she goes, I mean, it was literally, I gave her the number. She's like, and I watched her think about it. She goes, you paying cash? 
I'm like, I am now. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, and then, and that's how it started. And, and and so we've been friends ever since. And she's the only person that's tattooed me since. Whoa. Yeah. (laughs) Well, so now you got to fly out to my zone to get tattooed. (laughs) That's right. Yeah. Now I do. Well, I usually, she, she flies in, she like, she'll come in and she visits, but, um, but I remind me and I'll, I'll I'll hook you up with her. Yeah, uh, absolutely. She's, she's such a cool person. So she did the script that's then on these bottles. Right. Because she did, she, she did it because it's my tattoo. Right. And then, and then what we did is we lifted it, uh, from the tattoo and, and, uh, Mm. put it there. Okay, so, so that's the story behind the name. But why did you want to do your own gin? The reason that I wanted to do I well, I was approached about doing it uh, by a boutique um, company called uh, Sunset Distillers. Um, and it was because one of the founders of that company is a fan of mine and actually the same person that hooked me up with that tequila endorsement that I told you about. Mm. So we, as a fan of mine, that we had become friends and so he started this boutique uh, distillery, and he said, "You know, I really think that this would be a really great way to get your message out. I think it's super positive, and also because you are such a big artist in LA, you also like you have these great relationships with all these venues and stuff. I think it was, you know, it would be good for business for you too. You you should do this." So I was like, oh, yeah. I mean, okay. <laughs> I mean, you're so, not going to be upset about it. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's that is how it started. But then the more the more that we uh, talked about it, the more that like it started to make sense. And and I do, you know, I mean, all my life is nightlife. And and um, so so it says love is the answer on the front of it, and then um, on the side, which is my favorite thing about it, the, on the side of the bottle. It says, every time that an act is done in love, it nourishes both the soul of the one who has received the act and the soul of the one who has given it. May the sight of this bottle be a reminder of this beautiful truth to whomever lays eyes upon it. Cheers. I like neat. I'll have to order one in. I need to have (laughs) one of these just like on my shelf. Yeah. And these, these are the, this is like literally the proof of concept, the prototype. This is like the, yeah. Yeah, and I'm, and we I'm drank all to, of that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. I need to get one. Yeah. Um, okay. So, <laughs> sorry. No, no, no. That's, that that's fantastic. So those are all the things you got going on. When it, you're working on an album right now, that you're projecting, you're hoping to be done by roughly when? Um, it's going to be done uh, at the end of this year. At the end of this year. Yeah, done. And you got your TikTok that yeah. you're starting to put a lot of energy into. Yes, which is a blast. I need I people keep telling me to do some TikTok stuff and I'm like so far behind on everything maybe one of these days. And then you have uh your new gin brand mm-hmm. dropping. Right. Anything else that you're working on that you want to bring up? Um dude, I mean I I my Instagram is the thing that I've turned the most uh, I I put the most time and is the most uh personal. Like uh, TikTok is I like you know TikTok is the new Vine. That's right. what it is. Yeah. And um so like I said every you know, every, every video that shows up on my Instagram showed up on my TikTok first. So that's kind of that, that the place to go for that. And there's a f- couple things that go on TikTok that I don't put on Instagram. Instagram is the most personal thing though. I think you told me off my guy, I think this is really valuable information that, um, I guess you could, you could re-explain, but you talked about like aligning with the people that are doing the things you want to do, brands and things right. like that. Do you want to, can you explain yeah. that again oh. for like somebody that wants to be able to do yeah. some kind of monetizations, partnerships with sure. people? Oh, absolutely. Oh yeah. And yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously my music is on like Apple and Spotify yeah. and all that. Um, uh, yeah, because we talked, well, we mentioned, you said you had a friend that had like a, a you know, a million or half million uh, followers and, and that, and then you, you gave me a number that for me was much lower than I, what I thought it should be for the money that they were making. And um, what I was saying is that these like platforms, as far as I understand right now, like both I, IG, I, IG, I know for sure. And TikTok, I'm, I'm just learning about, but they, these, they don't monetize for you like YouTube does. Um, uh, and because these are, because YouTube is, we all, we expect commercials now, but IG, you know, they don't stick commercials on your page. They don't stick commercials on your videos. 
and and I wouldn't want them to. What that what you have, but if you are, but if you have a half million followers, shoot, man, if you have seventy thousand, I I well, I told you, I I got a very very considerable endorsement from a tequila company. It was a great tequila company, by the way. That that's you know, and I have I, at the time I had twenty four twenty five thousand followers, but like if that's genuine. And you have, if your engagement's good, um, that should be enough for, to get you endorsements and things like that. Get you paid for, um, for posting about a company and getting, uh, attention to that company. But you don't, you know, as with anything, and I'm sure you found us this out with the, that first, with the first business, with, uh, with the skateboard, uh, uh with the skate shop, you gotta, it, n- What's funny is a lot of times you think that something is going to should fall in your lap once you get to a certain place and it doesn't, right? Like, for example, maybe having like having your brick and mortar shop, the skate shop, putting all the things in, doing all the things, getting the perfect sign and where the kids, right? Where, where, where's everybody? You know, I did all of these things. What else do I have to do? And then you find out, oh, well, I guess I have to do this now and I have to do this or I'm having all these customers come through, but they're not repeat customers, whatever. There's all this extra stuff, you know, that you have to find out how to do it and how to make it work. But then then you begin to understand for the people that actually have a successful business, the presence that they have. And that's from all that extra work. It ha- it takes extra work. There's all these extra steps all the time, but it's worth it if you care about it. And I think that that's really, really important. So circling back to, um, you know, if you have high engagement and high following or whatever, but you're not getting the endorsement and stuff that you need, to, uh, that you think that you should have, you've got to go get it yourself, which means that like, what was the example I gave? I can't remember what it was, you know, I mean, whatever it is, you gotta, I mean, let's say, let's say it is a, let's say it's the, your, the IG of your skate shot. Let's just keep it at home. That way it's easier to sure. talk about. Well, if you're not getting, you know, and let's say you have, you know, 250,000 followers on your Instagram, right? Well, if you have that and you're not getting, and you're not getting skateboard companies and stuff calling you and being like, yo, Hey, could we look, could we throw you some cash for like posting? But that's crazy if you don't have that. But but if you want that, well, then what you have to do is you have to sit down, look up all the skateboard companies, IG, start communicating with all of them, being like, hey, I own this player down, blah, 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 and this and me, and this, yakety schmackety, and like trying to get, seeing what happens with their engagement, right? And they're going to come back. And if any of them come back and look at you and see, goodness gracious, this guy's got 250,000 followers. This is, this is crazy, especially with the new companies, the boutique companies, they're, you're going to get that. You're going to get like, Either you're going to get an inundation of free stuff. Well, you will, you'll get that anyway. And then you'll get like, you're going to get people asking about it or, or it's going to go through, you know, that's going to lead you through to something, but that's you. You have to innovate and you go to the, go to the, go to the people that you would like to get that you would like to pay you. Yeah. I think one of the biggest things that hold artists back in general is they think that if they just do cool shit, everyone's going to just come to them and find it and they don't need to promote themselves. They just think that it'll just happen. And it's not about being modest. Like that's great, you know, not to not be a cocky asshole, but if you don't tell people and get the word out about the cool things that you're doing, you cannot expect people to just find them. Right. Well, there's also an idea that if you're an artist and you're amazing, that like, that you will be successful. And that is profoundly not true. I I can't, it it saddens me. I'm thinking of two artists in particular that I, three now, that I'm thinking that of that are just absolutely no question genius level. I could sit here and play you their shit and be like, who the f*** is this? Why haven't I heard of this? Everybody needs to hear this. And that's what everyone has said every time that anyone listens to their stuff, right? And you don't know who they are and you never will because they do something else now. And the, it's not enough. That's not enough. People don't know even, that's even how it is in the major label business. You, dude, you know Christina Aguilera was turned down by every major label? Did you know that? I found out listening to you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Turned down by every major, turned down by every major label. Dude. And you know what? One of the biggest success stories in the last like five, 10 years, that's not music, but that's movie related that, 
that like it was a movie that could not get made that when it finally got made, it was the biggest superhero movie that has come out in the last 10, 15 years. Deadpool. Ryan Reynolds has been trying to get that movie made for like 10, 12 years. He could not get it picked up. None of the studios would and touch it. Well, it was the same way with the Queen's Gambit. But, but yeah, the same thing. So, so yeah. the thing is, is that, but, but as an art, as artists, we need to learn that. So you, that's that's, and by the way, Christina, when so with the Christina thing, she was on, she was a, a Mouseketeer. She's already famous. Holy shit! Like she was already famous. Still, they wouldn't sign her. Same thing with Ryan Ryan Reynolds. Already famous. Already a fame and famous for like being a heartthrob, being really good looking, all this stuff. And, and just like, you know, executives, people with the money. Nah, we don't see it. Like, but that's actually really, really, really important when it comes to being an artist. Because what happens is, is that, is that it, it is emotionally crushing when you put your heart and soul into something and enough people like it that like you don't it's not you can't call it a monumental failure but it's not a monumental success and you and you still so you sit there and doubt yourself and go well do i not have it am i not special it was this a waste of my time i would really rather know if it's a waste of my time you know like that's very very hard to know how to place that experience of not becoming a monumental success emotionally like where do i place that and it's like dude you don't it's business now it's business maybe you'll agree maybe you won't when i ask people people ask me for business advice all the time and there's a couple pieces of advice that i give one of them and i think is probably like the more important one is i think all you really have to do is to be able to sell yourself as the solution to people's needs <laughs> I like that. <laughs> right? Sure. If he could have sold himself as, hey, you're going to believe that this is going to work because you believe in me. Right. That's where it needs to come from. So that's part. That's a big part of it that I think people, like I said, I think their modesty gets in the way. They don't believe oh, 100% yeah. that this sure. is the absolute best thing. And Correct. then they don't tell people. Right. And then other people don't believe it. And then a lot of really <laughs> right. cool things really never go anywhere. Right. Right. So that's like my biggest piece of advice for somebody. If you had one, like one last piece of advice that you can use on this show that you can give somebody of how they can be successful pursuing their passion, what would it be? Um, a piece of advice for how a piece of advice for how someone can be successful pursuing their passion. Um, and, and you're saying successful in that, in that they would like to try and make a living pursuing this thing. Correct. Correct. They want to make money doing it enough um, money to be able to do sure. and live the lifestyle sure, sure, they sure. want. Um, no one is going to care about whatever you are passionate about unless you are being fearlessly honest about it yourself. So if you're an artist, you have to be fearlessly honest. You have to make the music or the paintings that exactly you want to make. You cannot for one moment try to do something that you think somebody else will like. You have to do it for you. You have to not care. You have to do it for you because that's the only time that you're going to produce something that's really worth something because the thing is what's worth the most to other people is the thing that is genuinely inside of you because we are all unique but you're not going to dig out that thing because that's that gem, that's that diamond, that's that thing you can't get anywhere else. If you're able to reach in and draw out that which is raw, you will draw out something that is unique and not repeatable. That in general takes a lot of like bravery and honesty. More bravery really. Because you're, you're daring that really it's stupid. You're daring to make a fool of yourself. But really, after you start to do that, you find out that that's 
it's actually not a big deal. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Passion Pod. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you soon.